I want to take the opportunity, given that we have um, members of the press um, here today, to uh, say a couple of bullet points about Florida State University in general. <laughs> we are uh, we are a university on the rise. We've gone up 25 places in the rankings recently, a top 20 university. Uh, we've improved on pretty much every metric that you could ever imagine in the last two years. Uh, under my presidency, our freshman retention rate is among the best in the country. Um, we have uh, the same graduation rate for students, <clears throat> whether you come from a privileged environment or whether you come from a challenged environment and won the APLU award a couple years ago for student success. Uh, we are leading the country in student success. Um, we have one of the lowest costs, one of the lowest debt for our students, providing access to the university. And as a first generation student myself, we have over 25% of our students are first generation. So we're a very special university in many ways. Um, <clears throat> in athletics, we, uh, we also uh, are, uh, have an amazing university. Uh, our goal, as I always tell uh, A.D. Alford, is to win a championship in every single sport. And we're investing in that way. <clears throat> and that is our goal uh, from uh, our football team, uh, who went 10 and three last year, and uh, to women's basketball, who were a couple injuries away from going deep into the tournament, to women's softball, who were in the national championship, and women's soccer, who uh, were in the College Cup, um, as a couple of good examples. Um, <clears throat> this year is a uh, we have a lot of optimism about our amazing football team, a great coach, a great uh, returning group of people, uh, 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 student athletes, and we couldn't be more excited by that. Our Florida State University fans are <clears throat> among the best in the country. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, all AD Alter will correct me. 60% or 65% of our fans travel over 300 miles to watch a home game, uh, every home game. That's absolutely incredible. Our, our viewership from 2012 to 22, we had 25 regular season games with over 4 million viewers, uh, which is a hallmark uh, in the media rights industry. And we're 12th in the nation in terms of the average uh, regular season viewership. Uh, we, we have uh, an average viewership of 3.2 million viewers on average. We're one of the best <clears throat> uh, media valued teams in the United States. Uh, we, in many ways, along with, I'll just say Clemson and others, but uh, uh, help to carry uh, the value of the media rights uh, in the ACC. No offense to my colleagues, but that's just the, that's just the numbers. Uh, and that's because we have some of the greatest fans in the entire world and the story tradition of Florida State University. We currently, uh, as you all know, face uh, a very difficult situation. We, uh, 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 we are seeing uh, large media uh, 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 deals that have been made with uh, places like the Big Ten and the SEC, which in many ways are creating, maybe it's an exaggeration, but an existential crisis perhaps for Florida State University as we uh, will be $30 million per school per year behind uh, in our gap in conference distribution um, with our, uh, with, uh, you know, contractual, uh, um, uh, with contracts that are said to go through uh, 2036. Uh, so uh, this current situation presents a very difficult situation for us <clears throat> because we are investing in things like football, uh, football, basketball, bring in the most revenue, which actually supports all the rest of the sports. Uh, without increasing revenue, we will face major challenges in being able to compete uh, in football uh, as, you know, the landscape is changing dramatically with uh, uh, our ability to compete in NIL, <clears throat> coaching salaries, uh, and uh, attractive facilities uh, to, to continue to build our brand and be competitive. And by the way, the waterfall 
uh, revenue falls down to support things like women's soccer and women's softball. So our Title IX sports will be could be complete affected in a very uh, dramatic way. Um, we of course are not uh, satisfied with our current situation. Uh, we love the ACC. Uh, we love our partners at ESPN. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> our goal would be to continue to stay in the ACC, but staying in the ACC under the, the, the current situation uh, uh, is, is hard for uh, us to figure out how we remain competitive unless there were a major change in the revenue distribution within the conference, in the ACC conference itself. Uh, that has not happened. Uh, uh, we uh, have those discussions are ongoing at all times uh, and continue to, to explore uh, that, that situation. FSU helps to drive value uh, uh, and will drive value for any uh, partner. And, um, but we have spent a year trying to understand how we might fix the issue. There are no easy fixes to this problem, uh, this challenge, <clears throat> but uh, we, a group of us, uh, many of us have spent uh, literally a year. Uh, um, uh, Chairman Collins, you can ask Chairman Collins, he'll tell you it's been a year that we've spent on this. And we've explored every possible option that you could imagine, because all options are on the table, as AD offers said many, many times uh, to the press and to the ACC. Um, and we continue to uh, explore all of those options. <clears throat> the issue at hand is, you know, what can we do uh, to uh, um, allow ourselves to be competitive in football and uh, get what I think, you know, uh, selfishly is the revenue that we deserve in our media uh, situation. Um, I think this continues to be a very difficult uh, issue. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world of conference realignment the, the, uh, with the, uh, the PAC deal uh, imminent um, and lots of, lots of things are going on. I would have to say that my <clears throat> current assessment of the situation after very deep analysis is that I believe that FSU um, will have to, at some point, uh, consider very seriously uh, leaving the ACC unless there were uh, a radical change to the revenue distribution. I don't think this is anything that anybody hasn't necessarily thought of. Uh, but I wanted to uh, make uh, make that statement to the board and um, and happy to discuss it with you um, uh, in this forum and answer uh, any questions uh, that you might have. Uh, maybe I'll just ask uh, A.D. Offord if there's anything that you think I may have not said that would be important at this juncture. Um, or anything you want to add quickly before we open it up for questions? A.D. Alford? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I think uh, you've stated the facts and, our, and gave the conversations that we've had over the last year of evaluating all of our options. And the only thing I would add is uh, this, how, how deep we have gone into the research and uh, with partners that we have gone out and spoken with to get all the facts, figures, uh, of all of our options and have really evaluated them um, to our best. Chairman College, that, that is my report and happy to entertain questions if you want me to. I, I'm sure the trustees uh, are gonna wanna ask some questions after that. Um, and I'm happy to uh, uh, help facilitate that. Does anybody uh, have any comments or questions of uh, the president or the athletic director uh, on what the president just talked about? Chairman? Yeah, Trustee Weatherford. Well, the, the question I had is actually a question 
that you answered. Um, so my, my line of questioning will probably be more of a statement. Um, but I was going to ask the question to the president, to the chairman, and the rest of the board. Um, simple question, fundamental question. Do we want to play games moving forward or do we want to compete? It's a really simple question, and I think I know the answer um, uh, from, from the board. And, you know, I thought the president did a really good job of laying out the state of play that we're currently in. Um, but I've thought about this a lot as an ex-player, as now a board of trustee member. And um, the simple fact is the cost of playing at the highest level um, is outpacing the ACC's ability to compete on a regular basis. I mean, it just is. And if you go back and look at how many wins ACC schools have had in the college football playoff, right? Who other than Clemson has had, you know, meaningful wins, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's not like we have to look into the future to be concerned. We're living in the present and there's reasons to be concerned about our ability to compete year in and year out. And on, you know, and some of those costs are really interesting that may not be apparent, but cost of NIL is a negative 10 to 15% outside of the athletic department, right? Money's going to be flowing outside of athletics into collectives. Coaches' salaries have increased almost 10% year over year for a decade. Um, A.D. Alford, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was 15% last year. Yes, sir. The cost of facilities, what it cost Clemson to build their football-only facility a few years ago is going to cost 30 to 40% more for us building ours. I know um, <laughs> the chairman's laughing because uh, um, he's in the middle of, of all of this. And, and meanwhile, not only does the SEC and Big Ten have such an advantage today, as those conferences continue to get bigger, their TV de their next TV deal comes up before our TV deal, guys. So they're going to pull further ahead um, when they cut their new deal. Now that Oklahoma and Texas are in the SEC and USC and UCLA are in the Pac-12. And, you know, the, the president threw out the $30 million number. That's a big number, but multiply that by 13 years. We're talking about over $400 million difference between what we're going, the deficit between us and the school down the road not to mention a bunch of schools north of us, right? We're surrounded by schools that are going to have a $400 million advantage. And that's $400 million they're going to be able to invest into all of their athletic programs. Um, not to mention it's $400 million they don't have to go out and raise right from their boosters, which the way, if you play this out, that's $400 million that's technically, I'm not saying it's all going to end up in the collective, but $400 million that they're not taking from their booster base and their alumni base that technically, let's say 10% of that falls into the collective. That's a big number. That's going to be a really, really difficult uh, thing to overcome. And I do think it's an existential threat. I use myself as, as an example, um, just to like play this out from a narrative standpoint. I was the most diehard FSU guy in the world growing up. Coach Bowden came and spoke at my church when I was a kid. I told everybody in the neighborhood for 10 years, that's what I was going to go do. I got offered. I didn't take any official visits. I committed early, started recruiting, and went. If all of a sudden, some other school offered me a million dollars to go play there, um, unfortunately, I wouldn't have been a Seminole, right? And honestly, I don't think anyone you know, if it was $100,000 or $50,000, it'd be one thing. But we're talking about, you know, six figures, in some case, seven figure deals to go play. And that's what we're up against. You know, you can have a kid just like me today, and there's going to be a school, many, many schools, you know, almost 40 to be exact, that are going to have way more resources than us. And so I do think it's an existential threat. Um, and this is just one board member speaking, unless something drastic changes on the revenue side at the ACC, it's not a matter of if we leave, in my opinion, it's a matter of how and when. 
we leave, you know? And not everyone may agree with that, but I feel really strongly about it because I don't want to play games. I want to go compete for championships moving forward. That's what Florida State is about. And uh, unfortunately, we're in a situation where money matters more than ever, and you cannot compete without the resources necessary. So um, I apologize for the long diatribe, but obviously I feel passionate about this and, um, and agree wholeheartedly with your comments, Mr. President. Anybody else have any comments? Uh, Peter. Yes, uh, Trustee Dallas Cuevas Diaz. Peter, can you hear me? Yes. So um, hard to follow uh, Drew, uh, but I'll try. Um, it, I don't disagree with Drew. I guess obviously uh, learning from a different angle and maybe with the legal hat, it's just it, one side of me just doesn't understand how the ACC doesn't get the 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 risk of of us having to do what we don't want to do in my opinion no i don't think anybody at this table wants to be in this position to have to take the decision to to go where we have to go but and then the other thing i do want to say is I, I i do we all know i love football but we all love our sports so this is not a football decision this is an athletic decision um and as much as it would hurt football it would hurt all of our athletes Mm -hmm. As much as our men, it would hurt our women. And, you know, our women have been incredible, particularly always been these last few years. And, and we would hurt them. Um, and as we all know, I think the other piece to this that, that has been very interesting to me is that we're also competing always from a state school disadvantage. And what do I mean by that? You know, we are capped as much as we have great legislatures and as much as they give us the money that they can, um, we compete with private schools that have huge budgets. Um, so we have those pockets that we can't even compete with and yet we do an amazing job. So facilities, as expensive as Drew's saying to just build new facilities, it's just as expensive to maintain what we have and we know we have facilities that we even have to start from scratch. So having this deficit although it's huge because of what we're talking about, but we are also looking at, at things that are just astronomical to begin with to keep our athletic facilities at par without doing anything major. Um, you know, to me, it's just, I guess to me, it's just sad to have this conversation. Um, and then part of it is, is as a fiduciary to this university, it's how do we do this eloquently properly um, and ensure that we put Florida State in the best hands possible um, when and if we have to exit because we can't make it work, um, we just have to make sure we, uh, we do what's right by this universe. Thank you, Trustee De Las Cuevas Diaz. Appreciate it. Uh, Trustee Alvarez. I'll, I'll make it very quick. Uh, uh, Sports is no longer an extracurricular activity at the university level. It's big business. So if you want to participate in big business, you need to invest accordingly. So we need to do whatever is necessary. First of all, we need to make the decision, we want to be in this business or not. And if we decide to be in this business, then we have to proceed accordingly that we have to face it. This is big, big investments and that's what it requires. So if we don't do that, then we'll just make the decision that we're not in it. But this is big business. It's no longer a sport. It has nothing to do with the game. This is a this is a big business, and this is an investment. So I have nothing further to say. Just something mm -hmm. simple. Trustee Sergeant. Uh, yes, um, I I think that we should really just believe in ourselves uh, and our team and our coach and our program. Um, I think we were all a little skeptical and, and shell-shocked um, in the beginning, but we have seen proof of the system that we have. It's a great one. And um, as much as we would hate to make some these types of decisions, it's with um, sadness that we do. We don't want to have to do that, but we also have to do, um, we have to keep our lifeline going. Um, and so we have to do what we have to do, but it would be with, um, you know, very humbly in a, in a way that we don't want to have to do this, but we have to do what it takes to compete. Thank I, mean, you. I think we just need to believe in ourselves and what we have. If, if this is a game of chicken, I hope it's not. 
Um, but I think um, we have a great team and a great program and it's, it's, um, it's gonna, it's resilient because of um, the attitude of the coach, Coach Norvell, all hats off to him. Um, and we just need to make the decisions we have to make that are our best, put the mask on ourselves. Thank you. Trustee Roth. Thanks, Chairman. And and thank you and, and thank you to President McCullough and, and AD Alford. You guys have over this last year done an amazing job of both identifying the problem and, and really tackling this head on and, and trying to fix the problem both internally in the ACC and exploring other options. And I know it's been a lot of work and and it, it, I, for one, and I think a lot of people on the board and, and probably you guys as well, um, would have liked to seen a solution already uh, under the current framework of the ACC. But I think as time has gone on, it seems more and more likely that um, a solution under the current TV deal and, and, and within the ACC is probably very unlikely. And so it kind of leads us to, to what's next. And you know, as, as President McCullough said, there is no perfect answer and there is no perfect uh, solution here. And, I think we would all love if every single planet aligned perfectly and tomorrow our TV contract ended and all three conferences or four conferences were offering us a deal and we could figure out what we want to do. But no matter what we do, um, that timing's not going to, that's not going to line up. And so I think for us, the alternative of just staying in this conference for the next 13 years um, and trying to wait for that perfect alignment of, of the of the stars is, is the equivalent of, a, of a, a death by a thousand cuts. And each cut is a $30 million cut over the next 13 years. And it's one thing to take a $30 million cut last year. It's another to take another one this year. But to do this for 13 years, um, as was pointed out, this isn't just about football. Um, we have some of the best women's athletics, some of the best non-revenue generating athletics uh, that'll take a hit. And so I, I, I think just continuing on this path of trying to get the absolute perfect deal um, is going to get tougher and tougher and, and just waiting is, is not the answer. I got to be honest with you, I think it's not just applying to us, but the ACC as a whole. If the entire conference for the next 13 years, every single one of those schools is taking the same hit for the next 13 years, when the next TV contract comes up, we will be a third rate conference at that point. And so waiting this out and hoping that we get an, another contract that, that's, that's good in 13 years, whether it's us or one of the other schools in the ACC is, is crazy. It's just not gonna be there. And so I, I know we're running into a deadline of August 15th. I think it would be ideal if we could come up with something before that, probably unlikely, I, I don't know. I don't know the details, but I don't think it, it, it's, it's unrealistic for us to say as a goal for this, this board and, and you, President McCullough and, and, and A.D. Alfred, that if we don't have something now, that within the next 12 months, we have an exit plan and we execute on it, um, whether it's the perfect solution or plan B or plan C. But I think our goal as a university should be to, to figure out um, how we exit this TV deal that we currently have uh, in the next 12 months. Thank you. Trustee Sasser? Yeah, I just, everyone said all the, all the things that I could think to say, but uh, the president laid, laid it out right in the beginning very well. And, and others um, have uh, shared the same thoughts. We've been talking about this for a year, Peter, and we haven't made any progress. And I think it, we just have to assume that it's, it's um, the, the next moves in our court, basically. Uh, Trustee Roth said it very well. We, we, uh, we need a plan to do it, but um, it, it's not, uh, we're $30 million a year at a disadvantage against uh, the SEC and the Big Ten. Uh, we've done a tremendous job with great administration, terrific coaches, uh, great athletic department. Uh, I think other than uh, the $30 million shortfall from the ACC, we're doing pretty well uh, on the other revenue parts of, of, our, uh, of our sport. Um, so it's not a downfall on, on, on FSU and Seminole boosters and alumni and fans and, and the administration is, is the $30 million bad deal that we've got another 13 years on. So we have to get out of that deal. I, I agree with Trustee Roth too. The other universities probably ought to be thinking the same way. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I want to compete at the highest level 
Trustee Weatherford, uh, just like we always have. And frankly, we don't fill the stadium today except when we play Florida or we play uh, Miami or when you know, the LSU game in Orlando is going to be packed, oversold. Um, we, we deserve to play the best. And um, we deserve to play them on a, in an even on a level field. So that's my thoughts on it, um, Mr. President. Um, uh, thanks for laying it out that way. I think everyone has the, the right uh, thoughts on this. We know where we are. We've been talking about it for a year, and um, we need to do something different. It's not going to change otherwise. Thank you. Anybody else? Just one quick thing, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. This is Go ahead, Trustee Gonzalez. Um, you know, as trustees, we're fiduciaries of the university, first and foremost, which really means we have to do what's in the best interest of the university. To me, it's not personal towards the ACC. It's not personal towards any of the sister universities in the conference, but we have a major math problem. Um, it's not a subjective assessment. It's a major math problem. And that problem really affects our student athletes and our coaches the most who work so hard at representing us. So from my perspective, I 100% support uh, the president and the AD uh, in terms of us pursuing all options. Um, so uh, from my perspective, 100% support that perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Henderson, did you Yes, I think uh, it, so many really great things said, uh, but if you look at the fiduciary responsibility mentioned, uh, the fact that Title IX kind of goes out the door to FSU. If you look at our national championships in soccer and softball and our, and, and our non-revenue sports that, that Michael and others have built up so well, you know, they're going to be the first in the way of trying to deal with a budget that would not enable those sports to exist. So uh, this is not just our revenue sports. It's, uh, it's our entire athletic program. It goes without saying, but... I think in terms of soliciting views and looking at this initiative, it's broader than uh, the, the revenue sport. I, I, I agree with that. Chairman, Chairman Collins, it's John Thiel. I, I would just add one thing. We built the legacy. We earned the right. Our media presence, our ability to put eyeballs uh, on games and create uh, unique experiences uh, nationwide, not just in the state of Florida. Uh, it's just we've earned the right. So we would all, you know, again, as a, a fiduciary, we would be falling down our job if we didn't capitalize on the legacy that was built by so many before us. Well said. Well said. Um, as you know, uh, you know, the president and uh, A.D. Alford have been working on this uh, every single day. Uh, we've, we could, and we're probably going to come back to you, um, pretty soon with, with some, some, some more conversation on this. Um, it, it's tough, uh, in the, in the public environment, you know, we got a room full of people there. I'm sure there's a bunch of people on, uh, uh, on the simulcast. You wouldn't, uh, you know, it'd be tough to run up any other kind of company like this. Um, but we're going to. So I, I know I can't update you all um, as much as possible, but uh, A.D. Alford can um, and, and the president can, and we stay within the sunshine. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm uh, personally, and I said this last night in some comments that I made, I am personally really proud of uh, A.D. Alford and the president um, for, the, for the work that they put in this last year um, and haven't wavered a bit uh, in, making sure that Florida State was, uh, you know, the most important thing to take care of. And, um, you know, we've taken some hits uh, on that. We've taken some hits from some of our sister institutions and brother institutions in the, in the ACC and um, other people. I don't know what they want us to do, though. Uh, we got, you know, it's, 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 uh, we got to, we got to fight for ourselves. And I thought, um, you know, we, I thought you put it great, Trustee Weatherford. I think that um, we don't want to play games. We want to compete. Um, we can compete. Uh, we are competing, but 
when the gap gets that big, it, you know, as I said before, it, it's insurmountable. I think I said at the last meeting in February, I said, it's almost impossible. And A.D. Alford said, it's impossible. Um, and he wasn't wrong. And so um, they're focused on it and I'm focused on it with them. And uh, we're, I appreciate everybody's comments. I appreciate the, you know, the, the, the thoughts on the university and, and what we want to do. And uh, I think that there's pretty clear alignment between the AD and, and the board and, and the president on this. And so uh, we're working hard on it, as you know, um, and uh, we'll be back to you. Could be sooner rather than later. Mr. Mr. Chairman, may I make one more? Yes, comment? I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut it off, but I was going to give you and um, AD offered a, a last shot here. No, it's a it was perfect timing. Thank you. Um, I just want to pick up on one of the, the, the points that was made by uh, Trustee Sasser. Um, you know, I, I don't know if this board knows it or not, but uh, the booster organization is is the uh, is one of the best fundraising uh, booster organizations in the entire country. It's a it's a model. As we go around to other universities, uh, they hear about we hear about them emulating uh, what we've done and what uh, A.D. Alford and Stephen Ponder built up in the team is really truly uh, amazing. And, and I could show you uh, a list of universities that are you know football powerhouses, and and we way outraise in terms of what the boosters contribute. So in the last 12 years, um, this year, the boosters raised more money in the history uh, in the, since we've been keeping track of it in the last 12 years. Um, uh, yeah, there was one year that uh, when Michael was in charge of it, that's just a couple million dollars less, very close. Uh, so I don't wanna take that away from you, but uh, they had uh, a record a record year. So it's not like to Trustee Sasser's uh, point, which is a really important one. It's not like they're raising $10 million a year. Uh, and then we can, we have 70 million that we're leaving on the table. They raised $77.7 .7 million this year, which is incredible. And so, you know, I think uh, maybe we can do more, but it's not like we're going to be able to raise an extra $60 million on top of that. So it's a great point by you, uh, Trustee Sasser. Uh, I think that's important. Um, and, and one of the reasons it's so important is because, like you said, it's not like we're leaving a lot of money on the table here that we can just go after. And, and, and the things that we, the opportunities that we have to make more revenue for athletics, we're all over that uh, and, and have a plan. Uh, so we're working on that as well. But First, thank you all very much uh, to the trustees for all your uh, uh, comments. I really appreciate it. And, and thank you for uh, all of your support. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to make a few more comments. Great. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, A.D. Alford, you have anything you'd like to say? Yes, I, I really want to thank you, Chairman. I really want to point out and tell you how much I appreciate the comments that were made, but truly appreciate the recognition of the other 19 sports, uh, the other 18 sports, our, our female athletes, um, because we pride ourselves in having the very best resources, providing the very best student athlete experience uh, that we possibly can, uh, that we're here in an educational mission uh, to guide these, these students um, to perform in the classroom, to perform in their sports, uh, to go out and perform in the community and represent us well and really guide them so when they go back to their hometowns, they're going to be great citizens um, and, and have that learning experience because this is the most impressionable time of their lives. That's why they're in college. And without those resources to provide these opportunities for them, we would be failing in our mission. And I just want to really thank the board for pointing that out, for recognizing how important that is uh, for all of our sports that we're able to provide these these winning edge resources to them in life. And with that, it comes with financial responsibility that we need to provide. Great, I appreciate the comments. Uh, anybody else before we um, move on from this? Uh, like I said, we'll be back to you um, perhaps sooner rather than later, um, but uh, we'll be back to you soon. 
Um, I, uh, I'm going to just open it up to the trustees. Anybody have any, anything else that they want to talk about? Anything you want to, um, anything bothering you? <laughs> anything that you, uh, didn't feel like got said today? Okay. Um, before we adjourn, here's a list of upcoming dates. Obviously, Labor Day weekend, FSU, uh, LSU. It's a it's a board of trustees away game, so you guys have all gotten packets from um, uh, from Heather on that. We're all looking forward to it. Um, uh, I know I am. Uh, the, our next regular in person meeting is going to be Thursday and Friday, September seventh and eighth. That's the Southern Miss game weekend. Uh, we'll meet on Friday, November tenth. Um, and uh, for in Tallahassee, it's a one day, we'll do a one day um, meeting like we did before. And that's the Miami game. Uh, the reason why we were going to do one day is it's, uh, I think that's Veterans Day and, and the university's closed. And so um, it's difficult to get a couple days there, um, but we needed to have the meeting for, for different reasons. Uh, the Board of Governors Trustee Summit and BOG meeting will take place uh, November 8th and 9th uh, on UCF's campus. Remember the BOG, uh, they, they like the trustees to come to the trustee summit. Um, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, do with that what you will. Um, BOG and the, um, we'll follow up with some details, uh, registration details later. Uh, the spring meeting dates in Tallahassee are January 31st and February 1st. Um, that, as we discussed at the last meeting, that coincides with the seminal evening reception and FSU day at the Capitol where I'm going to impose on you again to, to go around and, and, and knock on some legislators' doors uh, during session. Um, but we'll, and we're going to, uh, we're still working on details. Uh, I know there's a couple of you active with Heather and Marissa and Jimmy on details for the spring retreat. Um, and so I appreciate your efforts there and, and we'll be back to you probably at the next meeting where we'll have a little bit more detail. Um, Thanks to the staff for preparing our meeting this week. I know it was a pretty quick agenda, um, and, but it was a lot of work. You know, there's been months and, and tons of hours that have gone into that legislative budget request, uh, months that have gone into the whole um, plane and, and DSO discussion. Um, and uh, I do appreciate General Counsel Egan boning up on her uh, unknown law. Um, and I just, uh, again, I appreciate the time that everybody puts into it. Um, you know, there's a lot at stake and we're all Knowles and um, we want the best for the university. And I just appreciate the passion and I appreciate the effort that you all uh, bring to it every day. Uh, but if there's nothing further, um, then we will uh, adjourn the meeting and uh, we'll see you uh, at LSU. Thank you. <laughs>